Welcome to Continuum Data Training Course on Business Analytics. In this module, we will implement Discriminant Analysis Classification Algorithm on Boston Housing Dataset, using Excel Miner. For theoretical explanation of Discriminant Analysis, please watch Discriminant Analysis Theory module, before watching this video. In order to load Boston Housing Dataset, click on the Analytics Solver Platform ribbon. Go to Help. Now click on Examples. Click on Forecasting and Data Mining Examples. Now click on Boston Housing Dataset to open the dataset. Click on Data Worksheet to see Boston Housing Dataset. Click on Description Worksheet to see the meaning of 14 variables used in the dataset. Once done, select Data Worksheet. Click on Excel Miner Platform. Click on Partition in Data Mining tab. Select Standard Partition option. Remember not to select Partition button in Time Series tab. In the field, Variables and Input Data, click on Crim Variable. While holding Shift key, click on the last variable in the list. Press arrow key to select all variables. To ensure repeatability of analysis, set C to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Click on Specify Percentages button. Enter 80% for training set and 20% for validation set. Click OK to create partitions. Now, the data partition worksheet is inserted at the beginning of the workbook. We are all set up to carry out discriminant analysis. Select any cell on the data partition worksheet. Then, select the Excel Miner ribbon. From the Data Mining tab, select Classify. Choose Discriminant Analysis. All variables in the data set appear in the field. Variables and input data from the variables list. Select the cat MEDV variable, then click arrow to select as the output variable. The options for classes in the output variable are enabled. Number of classes is prefilled as 2 since the cat MEDV variable contains two classes, namely 0 and 1. Set success class, also called as live chart, to 1. Please note. This option is enabled when the number of classes in the output variable is equal to 2. Enter a value between 0 and 1 to denote the specify initial cutoff probability for success. If the calculated probability for success for an observation is greater than or equal to this value, then a success, or 1, will be predicted for that observation. If the calculated probability for success for an observation is less than this value, then a failure, or zero, will be predicted for that observation. The default value is 0 0.5. From the variables and input data list, select CRIM, ZN, INDUS, NOX, RM, AGE, DIS, RAND. Tax, PT ratio, and B, then click arrow to move to the selected variables list. Variables CHOS, LSTAT, and MADV should remain in the variables and input data. Click next to go to step 2 of the analysis. Under analysis method options, select canonical variant. This maximizes the distance between the classes. Select user specified prior probabilities. Manually enter 0.3 for class 0 and 0.7 for class 1. Excel Miner provides the option of specifying the cost of misclassification. Leave these options at their defaults of 1. Click next to go to step 3 of the analysis. Under Output Options, select Linear Discriminant Functions and Canonical Variant Loadings. 
This maximizes the distance between the different classes. Underscore training data and score validation data, select all four options. Click Finish to view the output. The output worksheets are inserted at the end of the workbook. The first output worksheet, called DA Output, contains the output navigator that will be used to navigate to various sections of the results. In this example, we are classifying the price of houses, based on the features of the houses. The output variable, CATMEDV, is 1, if the median cost of houses is higher than $30,000, and 0, if not. In this example, our success class is the class containing housing with a higher median price. Click on DA Output Worksheet. Scroll down to view the summary reports. A confusion matrix is used to evaluate the performance of a classification method. This matrix summarizes the records that were classified correctly and those that were not. TP stands for true positive. These are the number of cases predicted as belonging to the success class when they were actually part of the success class. This resulted in correct classification. TN stands for true negative. These are the number of cases predicted as belonging to the failure class when they were actually part of the failure class. This also resulted in correct classification. FN stands for false negative. These are the number of cases that were predicted as belonging to the failure class when they were actually members of the success class. This resulted in misclassification. FP stands for false positive. These cases were predicted as belonging to the success class but were actually members of the failure group. This also resulted in misclassification. Precision is the probability of correctly identifying a randomly selected record as one belonging to the success class. Recall or sensitivity measures the percentage of actual positives that are correctly identified as positive. Specificity measures the percentage of failures correctly identified as failures. The F1 score, which fluctuates between 1, meaning a perfect classification, and 0, meaning a perfect misclassification. It defines a measure that balances precision and recall. In the training set, we see that 62 records belonging to the success class were correctly assigned to that class, while 6 records belonging to the success class were incorrectly assigned to the failure class. Additionally, 294 records belonging to the failure class were correctly assigned to this same class, while 43 records belonging to the failure class were incorrectly assigned to the success class. The total number of misclassified records was 49, that is 43 plus 6. This resulted in classification error equal to 12.10%. Now, we scroll down to see how the model is performing on validation data. In the validation set, 16 records were correctly classified as belonging to the success class while 73 cases were correctly classified as belonging to the failure class. 12 records were incorrectly classified as belonging to the success class when they were members of the failure class. This resulted in a total classification error of 11.88%. Let us scroll back to Output Navigator. Now, we will look at how Linear Discriminant Model has performed on training and validation data. We will inspect both training and validation data sets. Also, 
It will be interesting to see the probability values of each data record, as calculated by the model. The probability values for success in each record, are shown after the predicted class and actual class columns. The misclassified data is highlighted in blue. Click on LDA Valid Detailed Report to see the validation data. This section shows how each validation data observation was classified. The probability values for success in each record are shown after the predicted class and actual class columns. Misclassified validation data is highlighted in blue. Click on classification function to see the two classification functions generated by discriminant analysis algorithm. These functions are very similar to regression equations. In this example, there are two functions, one for each class. Each variable is assigned to the class that contains the higher value. Scroll back to Output Navigator. Now, we will have a look at Lift Chart of Training Set. Lift charts consist of a lift curb and a baseline. After the model is built using the training set, the model is used to evaluate the training set and the validation set. Then, the data sets are sorted using the predicted output variable value. After sorting, the actual outcome values of the output variable are accumulated, and the lift curve is drawn. Number of cases are drawn on x-axis. The cumulated values are drawn on y-axis. The baseline, which is red in color, connects the origin to the end point of the blue line. It is drawn as the number of cases versus the average of actual output variable multiplied by the number of cases. The greater the area between the lift curve and the baseline, the better the model. Receiver Operating Characteristic Curve plots the performance of binary classifiers by graphing sensitivity versus specificity as the cutoff value grows from 0 to 1. The closer the curve is to the top left corner of the graph, the better the performance of the model. In an ROC curve, we can compare the performance of a classifier with that of a random guess, which would lie at a point along the diagonal red line. This line is sometimes called the line of no discrimination. Anything to the left of this line signifies a better prediction. Anything to the right signifies a worse prediction. The best possible prediction performance would be denoted by a point at the top left of the graph. This point is sometimes referred to as the perfect classification. Click on LDA Valid Lift Chart to have a look at Lift Chart and ROC of Validation Data Set. Area under the curve, AUC, is the space in the graph that appears below the ROC curve. This value is reported at the top of the ROC graph. AUC is a value between 0 and 1. The closer the value AUC is to 1, the better the performance of the classification model. In this example, the AUC is very close to 1 in both the training and validation sets, which indicates that this model is a good fit. Congratulations! You have done it. You are now, one step closer, to your cherished dream, of becoming a rock star data scientist. Hope you enjoyed as much as I did. See you in the next module. Until then, goodbye. For all your data science training requirements, please contact Continuum Data. Our team of experts will be glad to help you. Thank you for your time.